In today's video, we'll be talking about the NVIDIA 4000 series GPUs and their very controversial announcement, and their possibility of causing another GPU shortage. We'll also talk about the Intel gaming GPUs and how viable they really are, and the possibility of 4GHz clock speed GPUs coming into the market. Let's get right into it. Even though it is nearly certain that the RTX 4090 will sell out when it launches, you do not need to get your F5 key ready in order to purchase this GPU. A number of issues that caused the GPU scarcity previously have almost all been resolved. If you're waiting for the next gen GPUs to pull the trigger, don't get caught up in the launch hype. All indications point to the fact that the RTX 4090 will not cause another shortage of GPUs. The absence of a pandemic as a challenge for supply chains is the most significant change that has occurred this time around. Even though there was a slight increase in the number of COVID-19 cases a couple of months ago, it does not appear that we will face another lockdown very soon. That is helpful, but the supply chain is the primary factor in why there will not be a GPU shortage. The chip shortage, which ultimately resulted in the lack of GPUs, has almost completely subsided. The problems with the supply chain have not been resolved entirely, but a lot of signs indicate that there is an actually an excess supply of chips and not enough demand for them. In its most recent earnings call, Nvidia hinted at this fact by stating that the company has over inventory of RTX 30 series graphics cards and would begin lowering prices to clear out the stock. We're seeing the effects of that now. The demand for PC and GPUs skyrocketed in 2020 and continued to rise into 2021. Most of this demand has been gone since most individuals have been returning to the workplace. However, the components developed to fulfill this demand are still in existence. Because of this, we are witnessing a crash in the GPU prices. For instance, the original list of the RTX 3090 Ti was over $2,000 when it was released in April, but its current pricing is closer to just $1,200, almost 50% decrease. Manufacturing concerns initially caused the GPU shortage, but crypto prolonged it. In particular, Ethereum extended it. Although Bitcoin gets most of the attention, the Ethereum blockchain is where most GPU mining activity occurred during the shortage. One estimate suggests that Ethereum miners purchased almost 25% of all GPUs that were sold during the shortage. However, Ethereum is currently experiencing a significant decline, which is one of the reasons why GPU prices are falling so rapidly. That's a positive indicator because cryptocurrency has been a major factor in the pricing of GPUs for the past four years. So a price increase in Ethereum might have been disastrous. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore. The long-awaited merge of Ethereum just took place, bringing with it a reduction in the amount of energy needed for the blockchain, and more importantly, complete elimination of mining. Although the Ethereum group has been promising a shift for quite some time, it was perpetually delayed. To tell you the truth, it didn't appear as though the merge would ever take place, leaving the future supply of GPUs almost uncertain. Intel gaming GPUs will hit the market soon. The chief executive officer of Intel, Pat Gelsinger, has addressed rumors that the company will cease GPU development. Gelsinger claimed in a tweet that he received his own personal A770 from Raja Koduri, which is the president of Intel's graphics division, and the company was now getting the first batch of A770 cards ready for retail. Once the A770 is available for purchase, it will represent a significant step forward for Intel. Even though they are only available in a select few models, the company has begun shipping mobile ARC GPUs in laptops. The ARC 380 was the first to be transported out of China, however it was beset by driver problems and received many negative reviews. On the heels of the news that Intel may pull out of businesses in 2023, this sparked rumors that Intel will stop producing GPUs entirely. Kodori dismissed the rumors about a week ago, and now Gelsinger is promising the A770 will ship. The destination of the A770's initial deliveries is currently unknown. The A380 was only available in China, however it is unknown whether or not the A770, which is the first card Intel explicitly designed with gamers in mind, will follow suit. It is also unknown whether or not Intel will bring its Alchemist GPUs to the United States, Europe, or other international markets. Th that should be the plan, but is it still the plan? The timing is also not ideal for Intel in this situation. When Intel announced that it would be start taking graphics processing units more seriously, we were in the midst of a tremendous scarcity of components, making it appear as though we needed a third contender to market. In order to acquire one of the top graphics cards, one needed to either continuously check online stores and wait in line outside of physical stores in order to avoid paying scalpers. This tweet comes at a time when GPU prices from Nvidia and AMD are normalizing and frequently falling below the suggested retail price. Nevertheless, increasing the amount of competition in the sector might be beneficial. 
Previous statements made by Intel have shown that the ARC 770 can deliver better ray tracing performance than a GeForce RTX 3060 when running at 1080p with extreme settings turned on. When taken together, these factors suggest that Intel will not be able to compete at the highest levels of the market. However, the company may be able to strike a healthy balance between price and performance in the center of the pack. The AMD RDNA 3 Radeon RX 7000 GPUs can reach 4 GHz clock speeds. A hardware leaker named HXL issued a tweet in which he stated a GPU speed of 4 GHz for a future RDNA 3 powered Radeon RX 7000 GPU. According to HXL, these new chips will achieve clock speeds of almost 4 GHz, and even reaching close to 4 GHz will be a significant accomplishment for AMD. AMD was the first company to surpass the 1 GHz clock speed barrier with its 28 nanometer Tahiti GPUs, which is included in the GCM based Radeon RX 7970. Gigahertz Edition graphics card. This accomplishment occurred a little while back. The businesses easily achieved clock speeds above 3.0 GHz in the previous generation with its RDNA 2 product line, contributing to the company's infamy for high clock speed. Now, the business is going to start utilizing TSMC's 5 nanometer production node, and it appears that the red team is obviously chasing a new milestone, which is the 4 GHz GPU frequency level. By fabricating its Zen 4 cores with TSMC's 5 nanometer production node, AMD has already demonstrated a significant increase in its clock speed. Given that AMD incorporates critical learnings from its Zen CPUs into other intellectual property, such as the RDNA GPU portfolio, there should be no doubt in anyone's mind that we are going to get some fantastic speeds from the next GPU lineup. Sam Nafziger, AMD's SVP and technology architect, has highlighted that the next generation RDNA 3 GPUs, featured on the RX 7000 GPUs and next gen GPUs, will offer a range of new technologies, including a refined adaptive power management tech to set a workload specific operation point, making sure the GPUs only utilize the power that is required for a certain workload. In addition to the rumor that the clock speed will be 4 GHz, Nafzig also highlighted that the GPUs will be equipped with the next generation of AMD's Infinity Cache, which will deliver caches with a higher density and lower power consumption, as well as a reduced power requirement for the graphics memory. It is anticipated that the AMD Radeon RX 7000 RDNA 3 GPU lineup which will be based on NAV3X's GPUs, will come later this year. According to rumors, the flagship Navi31 GPU will launch first, followed by the Navi32 and the Navi33 GPUs. That's all for today's video. This is our first ever news video. If we can do better or there's something that we missed out on, let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video or didn't enjoy it, leave a like or a dislike. Make sure to subscribe so you always get GPU news. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.